fingerstyle guitar, questions and answers. This is just a short video where I'll answer all the most common questions that I've been asked during the GCH Guitar Academy Fingerstyle Guitar Course Book 1, which of course is still available completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com. So hopefully in the future when I get these questions again I can direct the people to this video rather than trying to answer the questions in the comment section. Right, let's answer the questions. Question 1. Can you learn to play fingerstyle guitar on an electric guitar? And the answer is yes. As long as you've got six strings on your guitar, you can learn how to play fingerstyle guitar using any guitar more or less. And to state something that should be obvious, if you've got distortion on your amp or on your effects, turn it off and choose a cleaner sound so you can hear the detail in the finger picking. If you like to use special effects, for fingerstyle, some of the modulation effects sound really good. For example, chorus, or phaser, or flange. Whilst you're learning to finger pick, I recommend you just using a little bit of effects because you want to hear clearly when you make a mistake so you can correct it. Question 2. Do you need to grow your nails to play finger style guitar? And the answer to this is no. If you've got nails, then you can use them. But if not, don't worry, just use the tips of your fingers. And does it make any difference to the sound? Possibly, slightly. But to be completely honest, when you're learning guitar, don't be too fussed about the sound you're getting, as long as you're getting clean chords and clean finger picking. You can improve the sound later when you want to do some serious recording or play live. Also, if you do decide to grow your nails, remember to do it just on the one hand because if you've got long nails on the fingering hand, you'll find it really hard to get good contact with the strings. That being said, there's certain styles of music that make it nearly impossible to grow your nails. And people who play those styles of music tend to get by fine just finger picking with the ends of the fingers. Question 3. Do you need to play the chord when the tablature only shows a partial chord? The short answer to this is no, you don't need to play the complete chord. However, this question is a little more nuanced and I would answer it differently for different guitarists, especially when I was teaching one-to-one, -one, face to face. So I'll try and explain what I recommend here. The best answer I can give to this question that applies to the biggest number of people is this. The finger style course is designed for people who already have a little bit of knowledge of the guitar. So the finger style lessons want to combine with or add to what you already know. So for example, if you've just started learning to strum chords, you want to continue playing the chords with the finger picking because the exercises you do in the finger picking course will help you to speed up your chord changes as well as learning the finger picking. However, if you're already familiar with the chords, 
and you just want to play clean, fast finger picking, you'll want to play the partial chords. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you're playing with complete chords and you pluck a wrong string, it should still sound right within the tune because you're still playing in the correct key signature. However, when you're playing complete chords, it may take slightly longer to get between the chords, so you won't be able to play as quickly or as smoothly. Now, when you're playing partial chords, if you pluck a wrong string, it could sound really awful. But, when playing partial chords, you should be able to play the tune far more quickly and smoothly. As a generalisation, more contemporary music is played using complete chords, and more classical music is played using partial chords. I'm sorry that answer isn't straightforward, but hopefully it's helped you. Question 4. Why do some chords have several shapes? This is another question that's really difficult to answer for people of every level of guitar. But if you want to know the answer in detail, I've put a playlist down below in the description that goes through guitar chord theory, and this will explain in detail what's going on. But here's the quick, easy answer anyway. When playing a chord, what's important is not the shape, but the notes you're playing. So if I take the chord that most people ask about, it would be the E7. And as you can see from this illustration, it's got two different shapes. And its proper name is the E dominant seventh, but we always call it just E7. In order to explain this in a simple way, we'll go back to the E major chord. And to make the E major chord into an E seventh, we have to add the dominant 7th note, or the flattened 7th note. And this note for the E is a D. Now, to introduce the D note to the E major chord, there's two places we could do this. The first one would be to remove the second finger from the second fret of the third string. And this would mean you are playing an open D string. Or you could add the fourth finger to the third fret of the B string. This is also a D, just an octave up. And either of these notes is correct. So from this example, you've got two dominant seventh shapes. Right, let's do that again with a different chord. And hopefully it'll become a little more clear. And this time we'll use the A seventh, which also has two different shapes. And again, we'll start with the A major chord. And the dominant seventh note of the A major is a G. And again, there's two places we could add a G to this chord. The first one would be to remove the second finger from the fourth string, revealing an open G string. Or we can add the fourth finger to the third fret on the top E string, because this is also a G, and this would also be an A seventh. So again, we've got two different shapes of the same chord. And what makes them the same chord is the fact that they're an A major with a dominant seventh note. Now, in both of these examples, the dominant seventh is an octave apart in both patterns. However, that doesn't matter as long as you play the dominant seventh note. Now, if you're new to the guitar, I realise this is really complicated and you might not understand it. But don't worry, at this stage, you really don't need to understand it. All you need to do is understand that there are different shapes 
to court with the same name. It doesn't mean there's an error. It's just being played a different way. Chord theory is really difficult to understand and there's no way you could learn it in one lesson. So that's why I've put a playlist down below in the description to a series of lessons on chord theory. Question 5. When playing fingerstyle, do you have to play a particular string with a particular finger? The answer to this question becomes self-evident as you go through the course. However, a lot of people ask this question at the beginning of the course. When you start learning finger picking, and when you learn specific finger picking patterns that can be used with various chords, you start by using the primary finger on the bottom three strings, and using the index, middle and annular finger on the top three strings. However, as you move through the course and become more advanced, this no longer is a rule. You can use any finger on any string, basically. And even multiple fingers on one string. Question 6. Do you have to get every tune and exercise perfect before moving on? The answer is no. However, the course has been written and designed to be progressive, so it slowly gets harder and harder. So you don't want to miss out any of the lessons, but you don't have to get them perfect. I have noticed, as I've been teaching for many years, that there is a psychological element to learning. In that, from time to time, I've had students who struggle with virtually everything I give them and don't do particularly well. However, you give them something that's quite hard, but they really enjoy, and they master it. So, there's a happy balance to be struck. And, hopefully, you're learning the guitar to enjoy it. So, you don't want to turn every tune and exercise into a task because this will destroy your pleasure of the instrument. Right, that's it for this video. Hopefully I've answered clearly those six questions that keep arising from the Book 1 Fingerstyle Guitar course, and I'll use this video in future to refer people to. If you haven't been through the lessons in Book 1, I've put a playlist down below for both the right-handed and left-handed versions of the course. And you can still get the PDF completely free at ebooksforguitar.com. And the second book is now available because the videos are going to be uploaded very soon. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And thank you very much for the support you give just by watching my videos.